In the last lecture, we learned about different life cycle hooks of Angular. Now in this lecture, let's understand those life cycle hooks in practice. Here, I have created a brand new project called Life Cycle Hooks. And in this project, currently we have one app component. Okay, so if I open the HTML file of this app component, here we have one div element and inside this div we have added one input element and one button element. Okay, so if I go to the web page, you will notice that one input element and one button element has been added here. Now, I have also created one custom component, which is this demo component. Okay, so if I go to the HTML file of this demo component, here again we have one div element and inside this div we have one paragraph element. Now, let's open the demo component class here and let's grab the selector of this demo component and let's use it in the app component. So after this button element, let's add the selector of the demo component. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page and you will notice that that demo component has been added here in the web page. So currently inside this paragraph of this demo component, we are displaying this hard coded value here. So we are displaying the text you entered is and then this a value procademy. Now what I want is instead of displaying this procademy, I want to display whatever value the user will enter inside this text box and click on the submit button. Okay, so let's say if the user enters ABC, in that case, this ABC should be displayed here. Now this text box and this submit button is coming from app component and this div and this paragraph element is present inside the demo component. And here, this demo component is the child component of this app component, right? And we have learned that when we want to pass some data from a parent component to its child component, we can make use of at input decorator and custom property binding. So let's go to the demo component class and here let's create a property. And let's call this property maybe value. It is going to be of type string. And initially, let's assign it with the value Procademy. Okay. And now let's bind this value in the app component dot, I mean, in the demo component dot HTML. So instead of displaying this hard coded value, let's use string interpolation here and let's use the value property. Okay. And if I go to the web page, it should still be displaying that Procademy. But this time, this Procademy is displayed using this value property. Now, let's go to demo component class and let's decorate this value property with at input decorator. Okay, and in order to use this at input decorator, we also need to import it from Angular Co. And let's go to app component.html and here on this input element, let's add a local reference variable and let's call it maybe input and then on this button element let's bind the click event and when this click event happens let's say we want to call a method on submit okay and to this method let's pass this local reference that means here to this method we are passing this input element now let's go ahead and let's define this on submit method inside the app component class. So here let's create this method and we know that this method is going to receive an argument. Let's call it maybe input element and we know that this is going to be of type HTML input element because here to this method we are passing this local reference and this local reference is storing a reference to this input element. All right. Now here inside this app component class, let's also create a property. Let's call it input text. So this input text property is going to store whatever value the user will enter in the text box. And initially let's assign it with a value empty string. And inside this on submit method, let's set the value of this input text. So here, let's say this dot input text equals 
input element dot value. Okay, so whatever value the user will enter in the text box, that value will be assigned to this value property of this input element. And we are assigning that value to this input text property. Now, let's go to app component.html and inside this demo component, we have created. So let's go to the demo component here and inside this demo component, we have created this value property. So let's bind this value property of the demo component with the input text property of app component. Okay. So whatever value will be assigned to this input text property, we want to assign it to the value property of demo component. So here we are doing custom property binding. Now we have already talked about custom property binding and at input decorator in great detail in one of the lectures of this course. So if you don't know how custom property binding works, then I will highly recommend you go through that lecture first. In this lecture, our main focus is to learn about different lifecycle hooks. All right, with this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And now if I enter something in this text box, let's say ABC. And when I click on the submit button, that ABC should be displayed here. Okay, so our web page is working as expected. Now let's understand different lifecycle hooks. And before that, let's first see how a constructor works. So let me close this app component.html here. Also, let's close this app component.ts. And let's go to demo component class. And here, let's create a constructor for this demo component. And inside this constructor, let's log a message constructor called now here we are using the demo component class okay so when the angular application will run in the app component.html angular will find that we are using the selector of the demo component okay so it will instantiate this demo component class okay so this demo component class and when a class gets instantiated the first method which gets called is the constructor. So when this class will be instantiated, this constructor will be called. Let's see that. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page and let's open developer console. And here you will notice that constructor called has been logged here. Okay. And it has been logged only once. That's because we are using this app demo selector only once. So, uh, demo component class will be initialized only once. Now, if I call it three times, so let me paste it two more times here. In that case, this demo class will be instantiated three times. That means the constructor of the demo class will be called three times. Let's save the changes and let's see that. So here you can see the constructor has been called three times and that demo component has been added in the DOM three times. Okay. Now remember that constructor is not a lifecycle hook. It is just a JavaScript feature and it is a method which gets invoked whenever a class is instantiated. Now in the last lecture, we also learned that by the time the constructor gets called, the input properties of the component are not updated and they're not available to use. Let's see that. So inside this demo component class, we have this value input property. Now let's go ahead and let's log this value property. Okay, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And you will notice that it is logging Procademy. Okay, and this Procademy is the initial value which we have assigned to this value property. But here we have binded this value property to this input text property. And the initial value of this input text property is empty string. So it should have displayed empty string here, but it is displaying this Procademy. That's because by the time the constructor gets called, the input properties are not updated. Okay. All right. Now let's go back to VS Code and let's comment these two selectors. So it was just for the demo purpose. And now let's talk about ng on init so ng on init is another lifecycle hook 
and this O should be caps. Okay, now in order to use this ng on init, we also need to implement on init interface on init. And to use this on init interface, we also need to import it from Angular Co. Now inside this ng on init, let's again use a console.log statement. And here let's say ng on init called. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And you can see constructor called. And after the constructor is called, then only ng on init gets called. And in the last lecture, we learned that this ng on init gets fired only once, just after the first change detection cycle. And we also learned that by the time this ng on init gets called, the input property of the components are updated. Let's see that. So let's again log the value property of this demo component inside this ng on init. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And here you will notice that when we are logging the value property, it is logging empty string. So now this value property is updated with the value of this input text property of app component. Okay, so when we logged it in the constructor class, at that time it was not updated. But now when we are logging it inside the ng on init, it has been updated. And that's why this ng on init is the perfect place where you want to add any initialization logic for your component. All right, now we also learned that this ng on init is not the first lifecycle hook which gets called. The first lifecycle hook which gets called is the ng on changes. Okay, and in order to use this ng on changes, let's also implement on changes interface. Now, implementing this, these interfaces is not mandatory. Even if you don't implement these interfaces, it will still work, but it's a good practice. Okay, now this ng on changes is the only lifecycle hook which takes an argument. So, to this ng on changes, let's pass an argument and let's call it maybe change. And it is going to be of type simple changes. Okay, and for now, let's simply log that ng on changes called. Okay, let's save the changes. And before that, let me also comment these console.logs where we are logging the value of the value property. All right, with this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And here you will notice that first the constructor of the component gets called. Then the first lifecycle hook, which is ng on changes, gets called. And then only the ng on init gets called. Now, let's also log the changes parameter here. Okay, let's save the changes. Let's go back to the web page. All right, so here the change parameter has been logged. And if you notice, the change parameter is logging this value. And this value is nothing but this value property. Okay, so here, if I expand this value property, you will see that the current value of this property is empty string. And the first change is true. That means this is the first change. And previous value is undefined. That's because this is the first change and it did not had any previous value. Now, we learned that this ng on changes gets called when the Angular app runs for the first time and also after each time, the input property value changes. That means this, in, in our example, this ng on changes will get called every time the value of this value property changes. And to prove that, let's type something inside this text box. So let's say ABC. Now when we type ABC and when I click on the submit button, this ABC will be assigned to the value property. Okay, to this property. So here the value of this input property will change and when the value of that input property will change it will again call this ng on changes. Let's see that when I click on this submit button you will notice that this ng on changes has been called. If I enter some other value let's say ccc and if I click on this submit button 
again this ng on changes will be called and if i expand this value property now you will see that the current value is ccc it is the first change no that's why it is set to false and its previous value was abc okay now if i don't change anything in this text box and if i click on this submit button let's see what happens so this time the ng on changes was not called because there is no change in the previous value and the current value okay so when i click on this submit button since the value of this value property has not changed that's why this ng on changes was not called but if we enter some other value in that case the value of the value property will change and that time this ng on changes will be called again as you can see okay so that's what we learned that this ng on changes lifecycle hook gets called for the first time when the angular app runs and then it will get called every time when the value of the input bound property changes in this example when the value of this value property changes after this we also have ng do check and let's also implement its interface which is do check okay and in order to use it we also need to import it from angular co and inside this let's log a message ng do check called let's save the changes let's go to the web page so here you can see ng on changes called ng on init called and then ng do check called and you will notice that this ng do check called has been logged two times that's because before this second ng do check you will notice that angular has loaded this code.mjs file that means something has changed and when something changes this ng, ng do check gets called okay so we learned that ng do check hook gets called every time the change detection cycle runs so if i enter something in this text box let's say est and when i click on the submit button you will notice that ng on changes gets called and ng do check also has been called so ng on changes got called because the value of the input bound property changed okay now if i don't change the value here in the text box and click on the submit button you will notice that ng on changes has not been called but ng do check has been called that's because when we click on this submit button an event happened and whenever an event happens the angular will run the change detection cycle and we learn that ng do check gets called for every change detection cycle so since the change detection cycle run this ng do check got called even if there was no change okay so this is ng do check life cycle hook it gets called for every change detection cycle and it gets called even if there is no change in the input bound properties then we have ng after content in it so let's implement that method and let's also implement its interface so let me move it to the next line and here let's say after content in it and we also need to import it from angular co all right inside this let's log a message now this lifecycle hook gets called when the components projected content has been fully initialized so let's do one thing let's go to demo component.html and after this paragraph element let's use ng content okay and let's go to app component.html and inside this app demo selector let's add maybe one h1 element or maybe h4 element okay and let's say this is projected content okay so when this when the angular app will run this ng content here will be replaced by this h4 element okay so this ng after content in it life cycle hook gets called when this projected content gets initialized let's see if the changes let's go to the web page and here you can see ng after content in it is called and here you can see the projected content 
Now, this hook also gets called only once during the first change detection cycle. And after that, it does not get called. So, if the value of this projected content changes, in that case also, this lifecycle hook, this ng after content in it will not get called. It will only get called during the first change detection cycle. And just like ng after content in it, we have another lifecycle hook, which is ng after content checked. And that lifecycle hook gets called whenever the projected content changes. Let's see that. So after this ng after content in it, this ng after content checked gets called. So let's implement that lifecycle hook. And let's also implement its interface. And inside this, you know, inside this ng after content checked lifecycle hook, let's add a console.log statement. And here let's say ng after content checked called. Right, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. So you will notice that ng after content in it gets called and ng after content checked gets called. And then after this file gets loaded, this code.mjs, again, this ng after content checked gets called. So this ng after content checked gets called for each change detection cycle. And it will also get called when the projected content changes. Let's understand that. So let's go to VS Code. Now here, inside this h4 element, let's use string interpolation. And inside this string interpolation, let's display the value of input text. Okay. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. So currently it is not displaying anything because the initial value of input text is empty string. Now let's enter something here. So let's say maybe a Procademy. And now when I click on this submit button, just notice what happens. So when I click on this submit button, you can see that this projected content has changed. And when this projected content has changed, you will notice that ng after content checked has been called. But ng after content in it, it has not been called. That's because ng after content in it will get called only for the first change detection cycle. But this ng after content checked will get called every time the projected content will change. If I enter something else inside this text box and when I click on this submit button, again the projected content has changed. So at that time also, this ng after content checked has been called. Okay. Then we have ng after view in it. So let's implement that. And let's also implement its interface, which is after view in it. And here, let's say ng after view in it called. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And you can see ng after view in it has been called. So this ng after view in it lifecycle hook, it gets called when the components view and all its child views are fully initialized. And this hook also gets called only once during the first change detection cycle. And just like ng after view in it, we also have ng after view checked. And this lifecycle hook gets called for each change detection cycle. So let's implement that. Okay, and let's also implement the interface for this method, which is ng after view checked. I mean, after view checked. With this, let's save the changes. So inside this lifecycle hook, we are logging this message and the ng after view checked called. And here you can see uh, ng after view checked has been called. Now let's change the view. So if I type something inside this text box and if I click on this submit button, the view will change. That's because the content in the dome will change, right? So if I, when I click on this submit button, you will notice that the view has changed. And when the view has changed, this ng after view checked has been called. But this ng after view in it, it has not been called. 
So this ng after view init gets called only for the first change detection cycle when the angular initially loads. But ng after view check gets called for every change in the view. Okay. And finally, we have ng on destroy life cycle hook. And let's implement its interface, which is on destroy. And inside this ng on destroy, let's log a message saying that ng on destroy called. Okay, now if I save the changes, if I go to the web page, you won't see ng on destroy called anywhere here. Because this ng on destroy gets called just before the component or the directive gets destroyed. Okay. And to understand this, let's add a button in our app component. So after this app demo, let's add a button element. So let me first include two breaks here. And here, let's add a button element. Okay, and let's call it destroy. And on this button element, let's handle click event. Okay, and to this, let's assign a method. Let's call it maybe destroy component. All right, and on this app demo, on this selector, let's use ng if. Okay, and inside the app component, so let's open app component.ts file. And here, let's create a property. Let's call it destroy. It is going to be of type Boolean. And initially, let's set it with the value false. And let's assign this destroy property to ng if. Okay, and it should be true actually so let's set the initial value to true okay so initially when the page loads we want to display this demo component okay now here we have assigned the value of this destroy property to this ngf so initial value is true so this true will be assigned to ngf and this ngf will add this content in the dom now let's implement this destroy component method so Let's again go to app component.ts file and let's implement this destroy component method. And inside this, I'm simply going to set the value of this destroy property to false. Okay. So when the value of this destroy property will be false, that will be assigned to this ng if. And in that case, this ng if will remove this content from the DOM. So it will destroy this component. And when the value of this destroy property will be false, when we will click on this button, right? So let's go to the web page. And here we should have a destroy button. Now notice that when I click on this destroy button, this content will be removed from the DOM and ng on destroy will be called. So when I click on this destroy button, you will notice that that component has been removed from the DOM. That means that component has been destroyed. And just before that, you know, just before the component got destroyed, this ng on destroy got called. So this ng on destroy is a great place to do some cleanup work because this is called right before the object will get destroyed. So I hope with these examples, now the lifecycle hook of Angular is clear to you. Lifecycle hooks in Angular are nothing but some methods which gets called during the important phases of the creation of a component or a directive. So this is all from this lecture. If you have any question, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.